In this video, we will go through the process of solving a problem involving a free-falling object using calculus. The problem is this. A ball is thrown straight up with an initial velocity of 33 meters per second. When it leaves the thrower's hand, it is 2 meters above the ground. And the question is, what is the ball's velocity the instant it hits the ground? Let's begin. Solving this problem can be broken down into four steps. The first step would be to write a position function, a function which describes the object's location at any point in time. A position function will have this form. This says s of t equals negative 4.9t squared plus v sub 0 times t plus s sub 0. The coefficient of negative 4.9 relates to acceleration due to gravity on planet Earth. v sub 0 is initial velocity and s sub zero is initial position. In this problem, we've been given some information that will allow us to complete this position function. First, we were told that the initial velocity of the object was 33 meters per second. When the, when the ball left the thrower's hand, it was traveling at 33 meters per second. That's the initial velocity. The ball started two meters above the ground. This is the initial position. Two meters above the ground represents S sub zero, the initial position of the ball. Now we're gonna find the ball's velocity when it hits the ground, but again, the first step is to use the given information to write a position function. Knowing the initial velocity and initial position of the ball makes it easy to complete step one, writing the position function. Because the initial velocity is 33 meters per second, we'll fill that in as the coefficient on t to the first power. And because we know that the initial position is two meters, the ball starts two meters above the ground, that will be s sub zero, the constant at the end of the position function. Now again, the position function provides a way to tell how high the ball is at any point in time. For example, if we wanted to know how high the ball is two seconds after it leaves the thrower's hand, well, we would simply evaluate s of two. We would substitute a two for the value of t in this function, which would result in negative 19.6 plus 66 plus two, or 48.4 meters. After two seconds, this ball would be 48.4 meters above the ground. Now, in this problem, we're not necessarily concerned with how high the ball is after two seconds. We want to know the velocity when the ball hits the ground. But before we can figure out the velocity when the ball hits the ground, we need to know how long it takes for the ball to hit the ground. Therefore, step two is to set the position function equal to zero and solve for t. What this will tell us is how much time it takes for the ball's position to reach zero, meaning how much time it takes for the ball to hit the ground. Let's take our position function that we wrote in step one and set it equal to zero. Once you set this equal to zero, you can see you have a quadratic equation and a quadratic equation can be solved with the quadratic formula. T will be equal to negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four AC all over two A. Here, A is negative 4.9, B is 33, and C has a value of two. Substituting those values into the quadratic equation yields this. So we have an expression, negative 33 plus or minus the square root of 33 squared minus four times negative 4.9 times two, all over two times negative 4.9. Doing some simplification, we, can, we will find that t is equal to negative 0.06 seconds, or t is equal to 6.79 seconds. A quadratic will always have two solutions, but in the context of this problem, 6.79 seconds is our solution. Negative 0.6 seconds does not make sense. It's outside of the domain of this function. This function goes from zero until it hits the ground, which we've now found to be 6.79 seconds. Now that we know that it takes 6.79 seconds for the ball to hit the ground, we can move on to step three, 
which is to write a velocity function. A velocity function is a function that will tell us how fast the ball is moving at any point in time. To write a velocity function, you begin with the position function and you differentiate with respect to time. The derivative of the position function is equal to the velocity function, which in this case is negative 9.8t plus 33. The derivative of negative 4.9t squared is negative 9.8t. The derivative of 33t is 33. And the derivative of 2 is 0. The velocity function is negative 9.8t plus 33. Again, the velocity function provides a way to tell the velocity of this object at any point in time, at any value for t measured in seconds. For example, after 2 seconds, the velocity of the ball is given by v of 2 negative 9.8 times 2 plus 33, which is 13.4 meters per second. Two seconds after this ball leaves the thrower's hand, initially traveling at 33 meters per second, it has slowed down to 13.4 meters per second. Gravity has slowed it down to this velocity after two seconds. Again, we're not concerned with how fast the ball is going after two seconds. We want to know how fast the ball is going when it hits the ground after 6.79 seconds, remember? Therefore, step four is to substitute this value of 6.79 seconds into the velocity function. This will tell us how fast the ball is going when it hits the ground, answering the original question posed. So we'll simply evaluate in our velocity function v of 6.79, Substituting 6.79 for t yields a value of negative 33.542, at least to the nearest thousandth, meters per second. This is the velocity of the ball when it hits the ground. The velocity is negative because it will, of course, be traveling down at the time that it hits the ground. Once again, the solution to the problem, the answer to the question, the velocity when the ball hits the ground is negative 33.542 meters per second.